Hey guys, it's Sarah. So today's video is going to be a favorites and fails video. Usually my favorites videos are just favorites, but for some reason this month I've had a lot of not so great products coming into my life. So we'll be talking about those too. Um, elephant in the room, yes, I did cut my hair. Um, I did it myself with the help of my boyfriend and um, I kind of like it. So yeah, it's not perfect. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to style it. I've never, never had hair this short since I was like one year old. <laughs> so uh, it's probably gonna take some getting used to, but it feels so much lighter and it just has so much more like bounce and volume to it. I love long hair on myself, but it was getting to the point where it just was looking very limp and lifeless because I have very fine hair. I have a lot of hair, but it's very fine. And so it's very easy when my hair is long for it to just kind of weigh itself down. And I just felt like I was ready for a change. And since it's not like I'm really going out and doing that much, I felt like it was a good time to just get experimental with my hair. So <laughs> here we are. Um, I'm sure eventually I'll go to a professional stylist and have them like touch it up, but I don't really feel comfortable doing that right now just with the pandemic, but eventually I probably will do that. But anyway, that's my hair. So anyway, let's get into some of these beauty favorites. So one favorite that I have not been able to put down is the e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow quad in Rosewater. Uh, I shared this in a haul video earlier this month and I have not been able to stop using this. I, it's all I wanna use. I need to give other products more love, but this is just such a great, like easy quad to wear. I am wearing it today, but I did top it with a Stila glitter. This matte crease shade here is so easy. I can just throw it into my crease and it, it just always looks blended, like right away. It's it, You just can't mess it up. Um, the two shimmers are beautiful. And surprisingly, I even like this darkest shade here. Looking at it at first, I was like, I'm probably not gonna like that shade. It's like a deep plum with gold shimmer in it. And normally I just don't like those kinds of shades. I feel like they just look kind of gray on the eyes. I have that in my outer corner today and I actually like it. I feel like it translates onto the eyes like the color that I would want out of a color like that. It's just that most of the time when palettes have that kind of color in them, I don't like it. But somehow I really like this one. It's very um, smooth and just easy to blend. And so I actually don't mind that shade at all. I kind of like that it's there. This is such a good quad. I really, I, I mean, the, the shimmers, you know, they do take some building. They're not like the most insanely buttery shimmers ever, but they're just pretty and they're easy. Um, this lightest one right here, I actually find that it applies best with a finger, but it just looks very wet and glimmery and just so pretty. So I have all four shades on my eyes right now, but it's kind of obscured by the Stila glitter. I'm really trying to use up those Stila glitter, so I've <laughs> been incorporating them a lot, but I love this quad and it's $3. <laughs> Um, and also another thing from that e.l.f. order that I've been loving, and I'm gonna do probably like a full haul update, or at least update you on all those products at some point, so don't worry about that, but I, I had a couple favorites already that I just had to share. I'm also really loving this fluffy eye blender brush. That's very hard to say. I really like this because it really, it comes to kind of a point that other big fluffy blending brushes that I have don't really have that, so, Something about it just makes it really easy to use. It's very soft and it's, you know, it's on the bigger side, but I just, I have the easiest time blending transition colors and crease colors with this. And I also like the point because I can apply a deeper color into my outer corner with that without it looking too stark. Like if I want a diffused application of a darker shade, it works well for that too. And it works for like light transition colors like that. Um, that light matte shade in this quad. I use it for that all the time. It's just such a good brush. I, I The other big blending brush like this that I use a lot is the MOTD. I'll go ahead and show you actually. It's the MOTD um, Seamless Sheer Blend. They sent me this in a set a long time ago. So this is just the one that I had been using for like a couple years. And I really like this one too. It's a great quality brush. But the e.l.f. one, the shape is a lot more pointed whereas the MOTD one is very kind of domed. So they both work really well for blending, but there's just something about that shape of the e.l.f. one. So yeah, I've always been a fan of e.l.f. brushes, but that one in particular, I feel like is gonna become one of those brushes that I use like every day. I'm probably gonna wanna buy multiples of it. I had to mention 
an elf fail that also came from that haul. I shared about this on my Instagram stories when I was trying it. This I cannot recommend. It is the e.l.f. Hydrating Bubble Mask. This, oh my gosh, <laughs> I used it once and I will not be using it again. So they say this hydrating and nourishing gel transforms into a bubble mask on the face, bubbles foam to remove excess dirt and cleanse pores for glowing, healthy looking skin. The whole bubble thing does kind of sound like a gimmick to me. Maybe there is some science behind it, but going on the skin, okay, it goes on just like a gel and then it starts to bubble up and like foam up. It almost turns into what looks like a shaving cream or something. It just looks very foamy. As it is turning into a foam, it itches so badly. At least my skin itched. It, it was just so itchy, so tingly. I tried to power through it. They say to leave it on for five to 10 minutes. I think I maybe made it like three minutes and I just had to rinse it off because it was just itching and it was so uncomfortable and it just felt like it was really irritating my skin. So I, I just had to rinse it off early. It got into my eyes as I was rinsing it off too, which I'm sure was just like user error, but I felt like I was rinsing it off just like I would rinse anything else and somehow it just like ran into my eyes. And even after it was off, my face was like, it wasn't terribly red, but my face was definitely red and looking irritated. And it was just burning for a while after the whole situation. Kind of like a combination of burning and itching. Really uncomfortable. So this I will not be using again. When I hauled this, I noticed that um, on the carton that it came in, it said fragrance in the ingredients. But the reason I had bought it was because on the website it didn't list fragrance. And so I tried to contact them about it. And I, I contacted them through their like customer service chat thing. And they said that the ingredients list on the website is the one that's more accurate than the packaging that it comes in um, because that's updated more frequently. But they told me to email their customer service email about it and I did and never heard back, which no big deal. I mean, I'm sure they're very slammed right now with everything going on in the world, but as I was using it though, I could definitely smell the added fragrance. So I don't think though that it was really the fragrance that caused that like immediate irritation because I've used other fragranced products before that don't necessarily cause me that immediate irritation. It might be more of a gradual thing, but I think it was just the nature of the product, like the foaming action was just so, so uncomfortable and so itchy and just really sensitizing to my skin for whatever reason. So I don't know, maybe it works well for other people, but this was just a total fail for me. I'm, I don't have any interest in trying it again. It was just bad. <laughs> a couple more makeup favorites. One is more of a technique favorite than anything, but it's eyeliner. I feel like I go in and out of phases of wearing eyeliner a lot and then not wearing it at all for a while. And I've been really into two specific types of eyeliner. One is just tight lining with a black pencil. The one that I have, this is the only black pencil I have, is the Jordana 12 Hour Made to Last in Black Point. I've actually debated decluttering this several times because in the past I've just been not really one to wear black pencil liner unless I'm forcing myself to, but for some reason lately I've been really into tight lining my upper lash line. I don't know what came over me, but I just decided to do it one day and I, I just kept doing it. I, I'm not, I didn't do that today because I have a black liquid liner on, but it just makes my lashes look a lot more full and voluminous, which I think is kind of the point of tight lining your, your lash line. Um, I don't really like to put black liner in my waterline on my lower lash line, but I've been doing it a lot with the upper lash line and I really like the look. I don't think there's anything that special about this particular pencil. It definitely can kind of transfer a little bit throughout the day down to the lower lash line. It does the job just fine for me and I've been enjoying that. I've also really been liking colored liquid liner. The two that I have, I wore the Wet n Wild one, which Wet n Wild's no longer cruelty free, but this is in the shade Voltage Blue. I used this in a recent Get Ready With Me and it was so much fun that I, I really need to pull this out and wear it more often. It's one of the easiest ways to incorporate color into a look and I just think it's a really fun little touch to add for, especially in spring and summer. So I've been really into that. The other one I have is the NYX Vivid Brights in Vivid Halo. It's like a pastel yellow. I'm definitely going to be getting a lot of use out of these colored liners um, this summer. Okay, so a couple of skincare favorites and then I have 
some more fails to share. These are two skincare products that took me a really long time to figure out if they were actually doing anything and I think the reason for that is just because I test out a lot of skincare, especially lately. I've been testing out a lot of different products, which makes it really hard to form an opinion on individual products. So I really want to start being better and maybe a little more scientific about my testing of skincare so that I can actually know if it's making a difference earlier on. But I finally realized that these two products, especially when I use them together, I wake up the next morning with just the smoothest, most like supple, hydrated skin and it doesn't even really feel like they're doing that much when I first apply them. But anyway, okay, they're from The Ordinary. The first one is their Niacinamide Plus Zinc treatment and then the second one is the Buffet Multi-Technology Peptide Serum. The Peptide Serum, okay, so many people recommended this to me when I was first kind of trying to get into The Ordinary. And I have to say, the first couple months that I was trying this out, I felt like it wasn't really doing much. It's just a very liquidy kind of gel. And it doesn't really feel super hydrating going on your skin. It really just feels like kind of a watery gel. So I'm like, okay, is this really doing anything? Because a lot of times I, I feel like I want to see that immediate like glowy hydration, which doesn't always mean anything. But for some reason, I just didn't think this was doing that much. But the peptides are really meant to kind of plump up your skin. And I really do feel like when I use this, my skin is just very smooth the next morning. So normally what I'll do is I, I cleanse my skin and then I use a liquid BHA exfoliant from Paula's Choice. And then I go in with any kind of serum or treatment like this. I found that I get the best results when I put the niacinamide on as a separate layer and then the buffet. I was also mixing them for a time, but I feel like they do a little bit more when I use them one after the other. So then I do the niacinamide. It's a niacinamide 10%. And this, I've always really liked niacinamide. I used to really like the Paula's Choice niacinamide booster, but that one is really expensive. This one is like six bucks or something. I find that it just really makes a big difference with my skin's texture. I suffer from a lot of like closed comedones, enlarged pores, breakouts, texture, just generally congested pores. And in addition to a BHA exfoliant, which also makes a huge difference, I feel like this just really smooths everything out even more. And my skin just drinks it up. My skin just really likes niacinamide. So I do that and then I follow that with the Buffet Serum. And I'm telling you, I, I, when I first apply them, I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is doing anything. But then I wake up the next morning and I feel like my skin is so just, it just looks nice. <laughs> it looks really good. And of course I follow that with a moisturizer too. So these two products, I really do feel like they make a difference. And um, yeah, I've, I've actually used a lot of the Buffet Serum and I'm sad that it took me so long to realize that it actually really is a good product. So um, yeah, really been liking those. Another skincare favorite, it's more of like a lip care favorite, but it's from Paula's Choice and it's their Lip and Body Treatment Balm. I just use it as a lip balm. You're getting a really, it's a really big tub. I don't think this is more than $15. I'll put it on the screen like always, but you're getting a massive amount here. You're getting 0.5 ounces, which is humongous. So it's a really good value. Even though Paula's Choice a lot of times is kind of pricey, this is a great value from them. I will say this is not vegan. It has both beeswax and lanolin in it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So uh, it's not vegan if that's a concern for you, but this, it doesn't, it's not like a super luxurious lip balm. Like it's not gonna give your lips like a lot of glow. It's not gonna look glossy or anything, but I put this on before bed. It's like the last step of my skincare routine. And in the morning, my lips look so smoothed out. It's like the lines in my lips are just kind of smoothed over and they look just really plump and hydrated and just deeply moisturized and when I use this at night, I don't really get chapped lips. Like, I don't even really have to use it during the day. As long as I put this on at night and sleep in it, it just smooths out my lips, takes care of any dryness, chappedness, all of that. So this is, I feel like, the first lip balm I found in a while that really works well. So had to give that a shout out. Um, I feel like I've been on the hunt for an actual good lip balm and this is the one. It's just great. Oh wait, one other makeup product that I almost forgot to mention, but this is 
not a new product at all. I've just fallen back in love with it. It's probably been in a past favorites video before, but it's the Becca highlighter in Champagne Pop, the powder version. This is just the best highlighter I've ever used. <laughs> I'm wearing it today. I would say it's a pretty intense highlighter, not in the sense that it's really glittery or sparkly or anything like that, but it really does show up. But at the same time, it just looks so smooth and even. It doesn't accentuate any texture. It just looks really beautiful and glowy. It's not the kind of highlighter that I'm gonna reach for if I'm wanting like a no makeup makeup look or like a very subtle highlighter. It's not that. But as far as like highlighters that really pack a punch, this is just the most natural looking and just beautiful one that I've found. I have the mini here and I'm so close to hitting pan. I'm actually surprised I haven't yet but I could see myself repurchasing this when I use it up. Um, I'd love to get more shades too. It's just, it's one of those high-end products that I really think is worth the hype and it's worth the price. Okay, so another fail, I talked about this in my sunscreen review roundup, which I will link in case you missed it, but it's the Super Goop Bright Eyed Mineral Eye Cream. I really wanted to like this product and there are times I've used it that I have really liked it, but because it is a zinc oxide only sunscreen, it can really pill up. That's quite common with zinc oxide sunscreen products. There are some zinc oxide sunscreens that don't, but I feel like it's kind of hard to find. And yeah, it's just kind of unreliable. Like there've been some times I've used this and it looks great on my under eyes, no pilling. Other times, even when I'm not layering, layering it over a bunch of like serums and skincare products, it really can pill and flake. That's also happened with like when I put concealer over it, sometimes it can pill. Other times it doesn't, but it's just kind of like, it's like a $36 product. And I feel like for that price tag, it should work and look nice no matter what. So it's just, I feel like it's just expensive, but it's also just not a great product. And I was just kind of disappointed in it. I'm gonna continue to use it, like don't get me wrong. I feel like it works well on like, especially on no makeup days or anytime I'm wearing a chemical sunscreen and I need that protection around my eyes, it's useful for that but I just have to be really careful about using it and not allowing it to pill, because that's really annoying. Couple of body sunscreen fails also. I also talked about these in that sunscreen video, but I just wanted to share them again, because they're really just disappointing. <laughs> the Alba Botanica Sensitive Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30 and the Bare Republic SPF 50 mineral sunscreen. So these are both mineral sunscreens. They have both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide as their active ingredients. And these both are just very, very thick and sticky, just kind of like your stereotypical sunscreen or your stereotypical mineral sunscreen. Like you really feel them sitting on your skin. They're sticky. They both leave a white cast. The Bear Republic one especially has an even worse white cast. And I just think very few people would like these. And I, I've heard a lot of really good things about Bear Republic, but this is just no good. So, just disappointing. However, on that video, a couple people recommended the Alba Botanica Hawaiian Sunscreen SPF 45 with green tea. Now this is a chemical sunscreen. I went out and bought it that day after I got some comments from you guys and they just had it at my grocery store. It's very affordable. And this is so much better than this green one, the mineral one. This one, it still, you know, claims to be reef safe. It doesn't have oxybenzone or octanoxate in it, but it does have um, chemical filters as opposed to mineral ones. So there's no white cast with this. It does come out white because it's like a lotion, but it blends in clear. And it's just a lot more pleasant to wear than either the Bear Republic or the Alba Mineral ones. It does really smell like sunscreen, like it just it smells like your classic sunscreen smell, very like, I guess kind of beachy. It definitely has a lot of fragrance in it, which I don't really mind that on my body. But as long as you don't mind that it like smells exactly like the classic sunscreen smell, um, it really is a lot more lightweight. It sinks in. It can be a little greasy at first, but it's just nowhere near as bad as this one. So. Uh, I wanted to let you know about that because I felt like in that video, it, that video was kind of a downer because I was like, none of these body sunscreens that I've tried are any good. Um, they're all just very thick and heavy. 
but I'm really glad that I went and tried this one. I also like that it's really easy for me to just buy at my grocery store. So this may end up being my go-to. It's still not perfect, like it still doesn't feel like you're wearing nothing on your skin, but it's the best one that I've found so far. So did want to kind of let you know about that and I would definitely consider this a favorite. I feel like it it checks off most of the boxes for me when it comes to sunscreen and that, that is hard to find. <laughs> And then last but not least, I also have a tea favorite. In my last few favorites videos, I've shared tea favorites and I have another one to share with you. So this is a an iced tea. We actually get this from the local Asian grocery store. There's one right near me. It just says green tea on the front, but um, it is a jasmine green tea. But if you like kind of a floral tasting tea, I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, <laughs> no pun intended. But if you like that kind of a flavor, it is so refreshing. I have a glass of it right here. I feel like I've been drinking it in all of my recent videos. It's just so good. It really does have that very floral jasmine flavor that I love. So I had to mention that. If you have an Asian grocery store nearby, go in there and check it out because there are so many interesting things there. And I'm kicking myself for not shopping there sooner because I found so many great items that I now buy regularly there. They also have tofu that's much more affordable than for, than tofu at other stores. And I, I go through tofu like water. <laughs> so um, tofu, let's see, they have really interesting mushrooms there, dumplings. Oh, you can also make your own bubble tea at home. They have those tapioca pearls. So good, we've been making that a lot too. Just mm. definitely go check out your international grocers because they're really fun to just kind of go and check out and see what they have. Um, I don't know why I never went in there before because there's so much good stuff. So, but yeah, that tea is divine. <laughs> they also have an oolong tea that's also iced in that same kind of container and that one is really good too. So anyway, those are my favorites and fails for the last month or so. Everything will be linked down below, of course. Um, everything that I can link, I don't think I can link the tea, but everything else. And um, if you do end up purchasing any of these things and you shop through one of those links, I do make a small commission, which re actually really does help me out. It helps me continue putting more into my channel. So um, you're, di you're directly supporting my channel when you use those links. So I do really appreciate it if you do use them. Um, but of course, no pressure. But I think that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, I'd love to see you again soon and I'll talk to you next time.